and welcome to another edition of What Does the Giraffe Say Media with me, Kathleen Ritorne. We're an organisation that aims to connect people in conservation by holding live interviews on social media. Today, I am very happy we are heading over to Kenya where we are joined by Ambrose and he is the leopard researcher and wildlife photographer amongst many other things. He wears several different hats. Um, so Ambrose, if I could hand over to you, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into conservation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kadil. Uh, my, my name is Ambrose Petuloi and uh, I'm from Kenya. Uh, I work for Leopard Conservation and also I'm the co-founder of Shui Mamas and the co-founder of Wildlife uh, Conservation Resource Center. Uh, uh, my journey is I'm just a pastoralist uh, boy uh, who have been raised by the uh, nomadic uh, pastoralists in Kenya, Samburu community. My, my mom and dad, my dad never gone to school. So I got this opportunity to go to school. And uh, when I was in high school, I joined a club called Environmental Clubs of Kenya. And after I joined the club, I was so much interested to get to learn about uh, wildlife. So, I'm very, uh, uh, I, I was so much keen to to get to this, and uh, I was so much passionate. And the people are uh, the student elected me as the chairperson, and they, I, we we went to so many parts, uh, including one called Olchogi Conservancy, whereby and whereby where that is the place that I got interest to learn about wildlife. That is where I've learned about Thompson gazelles and others. So uh, I grew up and after that, I went to college with the support from uh, amazing uh, 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 people who have uh, encouraged me to go to school. And then after that, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I came back to Lusaba Conservancy and I was so much inspired and empowered by the uh, by Lusaba Conservancy CEO, Tom Sylvester, uh, who really uh, got up my hand and really supported me. So uh, that is just a brief history about myself, but uh, Currently, I'm one of those uh, individuals in Kenya who are trying to help uh, conserving the wildlife. Even though I am, I am coming from a community that is keeping livestock, we also have uh, carnivores like leopard and hyenas around there. So I'm trying to help that, and I'm really happy and privileged to get to work with, with this team for leopard conservation. I mean, it's fantastic that you've had the support and the backing that you've had because you've, you've gone on to do some incredible work. Um, and you touched on it earlier as you were just speaking. In Kenya, the traditional way of life has changed with the coexistence of um, wildlife and humans. Um, and animals have been moved to parks, access has been restricted. Many local people don't understand the importance of conservation. Um, so then they can sometimes get tempted to be lured into poaching and doing things that, that are not good for conservation. I know you're a very keen photographer and you're very good at it. Um, how do you use this to kind of combat that? So uh, basically, uh, as, I, uh, as I, I just mentioned about, I, am a, um, I come from a pastoralist community that we keep livestock and we, we, we keep livestock. And, uh, and the, one of the things that has really inspired me a lot is that in my community, we have this uh, uh, kind of predation and the, uh, even though my mother, my mother, or my father uh, uh, keep livestock, they don't care about other wildlife. They, yeah. they you know, they, they have been consistent with the wildlife over the years. But uh, one of the interesting thing is that we have these conflicts. Uh, conflicts is because of predation of carnivores, and they, uh, over the years, you know, warriors uh, retaliate, kill the wildlife. You know, a, a carnivore if it is going to attack the livestock, which I think I also agree because this is our livelihood, and they. Uh, where, you know, uh, uh, when I went to college, I said that I need to do something. I need to go back to my community and take the education that I have learned, and then try to educate my, my community. So uh, recently, when I joined Leopard Conservation uh, uh, with the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance, where we we wanted to understand the attitudes the people have with leopards and the other carnivores. So I got this opportunity to interview my community, to work in my community. And I went to understand what is exactly the problem, which kind of is really attacking. Isn't it leopard? Isn't it hyena? Isn't it lions? And I came to get interested that uh, people really uh, have very much negative attitudes toward leopards. And the only thing that I thought is better we can do is just to give uh, education, to educate people about it. And, uh, you know, in, in our community, we have, we have women. Those are the people I really always meet them when I go to do my surveys, my interviews. Uh, 
and we I, I, I co-founded this group to empower women just to empower women through conservation through uh, the work that we do for example leopard uh, women called three mamas she is a leopard so we we I co-founded this uh, organization so that we can able to uh, help uh, these women get empowered and they think that they are getting benefit through leopard conservation so uh, that is one of the things that I'm doing. Uh, well, also, the other thing that I'm doing is uh, the other thing that I'm doing is uh, I, 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 I co-founded an organization called World Life uh, Kid Resource Center. And in this, uh, I, I, I formed uh, I, when I, I, when I was just in, in college, I, I fall in love with photography, and uh, I, I thought that pictures really can help uh, give awareness either through uh, social media or either through prints. And I thought that I, one day I will I'll make a, a, a Felix studio. And then one after college, uh, I, I went back to Felix and I, I built this small uh, room, which I think I was I was having an idea of uh, putting as a, as, a, as a studio. My my idea is that I print my pictures that I take in the bush and try to bring kids to get educated. But you know this idea really changed. And they, one day I talked to my friend here in Kenya. And even through social media, and I asked them that I want to raise, uh, I want to do uh, a fundraising, you know. And this fundraising is not about money. I, all photographers all over the world, I need books. I need, I'm going to build, to turn this studio that I was thinking that I'm going to build to be a, 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 a kind of a, a library. And the, something like a, a library for, for kids here in Kenya, especially in my community. And the, I also created a day in, in in every week that I should be uh, uh, educating kids about conservation. So I created this resource center called Wildlife Kid Resource Center. And in this kid in this center, uh, I ask all people to donate books. And I got a lot of friends here in Kenya, specifically, specifically wildlife photographers, and also wildlife authors who wrote books and they donated books. Really, they really did that. And they, I have been like trying to come together and uh, give kids this uh, opportunity to, to, to come together and watch films. Uh, if you are the filmmaker, well, the filmmaker, you can, you can, uh, uh, you, can uh, uh, you know, donate a film and the kids really like that. So every Saturday, these kids come here. So we started with, uh, with the idea of having uh, this uh, idea of kids watching birds because birds are the uh, we find all in every village we always get birds there so yeah. uh, we started having kids coming to learn about uh, these birds and they i i have asked one one young man his name is called joseph approached me and he really liked the idea and he told me that he, i am a, a form for liver i don't know anything i want to learn so i told him do you want to learn i'll be your teacher but you must be a teacher for these kids so he came and then I, I, when I teach him about wildlife, these things are all bad and stuff like that, he go back. So he is not really perfect because he is volunteering to teach kids and now he is, he is inspiring to go and study about wildlife conservation. Uh, and he, he, that is one of the things that I thought that this is my idea that I wanted to educate kids about wildlife conservation. But because I'm a wildlife photographer and we have so many wildlife photographers who have been taking pictures, you don't do anything. You can donate a print, you can donate a, a, a kind of a, a, a oh, he's frozen up a little bit there as he's talking. Oh, there we go. I think he's coming can, back. Kid, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, it's just because of uh, this work that we have been doing all over the. All, you know, this is one. This is one of the things that I thought that is better. To involve other world day photographers, and the, it is my idea to educate kids in my village. But I can invite anyone to give that back to community. And the, every book that uh, uh, oh, I can say that it is because of your work, and I'm really happy that uh, we are giving back to community together, either through your pictures, either through your book, or the. To think that I thought it's better that we, 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 we. Yep, you're still there. Um, so you were talking earlier a lot about your photography there, and I know you're a Jackson Wild Fellow. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that means and how that came about? <laughs> this is an opportunity that I got from friends who really uh, believe 
the, the work that I do. And uh, uh, this is a lady called Dr. Paula Kahumbu and a guy called Noel Cock and Pragna Cock from South Africa. So these guys have been following me through the social media, especially Cock and the Pragna. But Paula really is my mentor. She really mentored me here to become a, a, a kind of a person who grew up. She visited me here in the village and she have learned that what I am doing, she really, that is what she believed. Uh, one day I got an email and uh, when I got the email, my, my boss, uh, her name is called Dr. Christy Rupert. Uh, she, she did send me a link to apply for this fellowship. And uh, I did that like a few years ago and I never got any response. Uh, one day I got this email that you are invited to do to go and uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, be a fellow of South African uh, South Africa and uh, Jackson World fellow. And uh, Paula Kahumbu called me and she asked me, "Are you ready for this?" And yes, I said yes, I am ready for this. And then Noel called me. He really uh, he is running a, a negotiation call. Uh, uh, called NIF in South Africa, uh, and he is really doing a lot of work to empower uh, young people in his country. But what he, what Noel is now doing is that he's trying to bring uh, young uh, African uh, uh, people who are doing uh, amazing work in his community to bring them together here in Africa. So that is is a champion that I can say that we need to celebrate him a lot together with his wife Pragna. They they are really doing a lot of work there in South, back in South Africa, and I went to meet these fellows that we have been. Uh, now friend and the, we have learned like uh, th in this opportunity we do a lot of uh, learning about how we, to create videos how to tell stories as a, as a, as a growing uh, storyteller uh, that I, I thought that is one of the uh, greatest opportunities that I, 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 have, I, um, I was uh, privileged to benefit especially coming from uh, my community in Samburu uh, here in Kenya I think as well, you're such a success story, as you were saying, you know, you, you came from quite humble beginnings and, and you've worked your way up and you're, you're now a leopard researcher. Um, and one of the incredible things that you kind of managed to capture and show to the world was a black leopard that was in one of the local communities. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about this animal, um, kind of touching on why it's black for a start um, and why they're so rare? And does its coloring impact its survival, mating chances, and, and kind of what you've learned about it? So black leopards are, are, new, uh, are, are just normal leopards. They are just like melanistic leopards, and they are also called uh, black pandas. They are just species of cat that we also refer them as, uh, you know, you know the, the black pandas. Uh, but uh, this is something that uh, it surprised so many people when I got this uh, black leopard, and they. It was back to 2018. I was just doing the work with community, you know, uh, and one I was just showing people which kind of way is creating problem. Isn't it leopard? Isn't it hyena? And it, through this story, because I speak local language with the people, uh, through these stories that we have been talking with elders and, uh, and local community, one of them told me that, and I think uh, there is another species that is around that is not in your list, and they asked me which species. There's a black leopard, and uh, I, I told them that I don't think it's black leopard. Okay, okay. My grandma told me that there is black leopard around, and they used to call them Kinyala Shaw. I think they, 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 they are massive leopard who kill calves of cows, and that is what they always refer. Uh, but as, as to me, uh, I, I never knew that that is just, uh, I thought maybe that's just a leopard or something like that, or a cat, or a welder cat. That is one of the things that I was thinking. But, uh, you know, uh, I was so much curious, and uh, I, I I was like, I need to do something so that I can capture this image. And uh, as, a, as a person who is doing research, this is my first time. I've never used camera. To become a, to become a, so, so one of the things that I have been always doing is that trying to educate the people about these animals. Uh, I, need, I need to give you the I need to give you the the the, 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 the cameras so, so that you can go back and deploy in your in, 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 you know around the conservancy that we are doing our research in our study area. So I went back and tried to uh, uh, put camera traps around uh, with the help of with rangers. I'm not saying that I'm do, I did this one alone. So with the help of local rangers who have been really doing a lot of work around, 
we went together and we put these camera traps around. And then after a few days, we got a black lock and now camera traps. I did send to my, my supervisor and he said that this is interesting. We need to do to see it because we they are rare, but we need to protect them. And the, the best thing that can able to protect them is the science. Science can also protect this animal because we need to study it. So we never posted our images, never, ever. 2018, we never posted our pictures. We decided to collect. So this is one of the things that we have been doing, uh, trying to uh, uh, capture more images, more images of this black leopard. And uh, recently, uh, after, after we got this, Uh, he was so good and he has very good uh, equipment. Uh, unlike my, ourself, he really has some good uh, equipment, like uh, he is the founder of a, 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 a device called Camera Traption. And uh, when he came, uh, he tried to deploy his camera trap away from where we, we are taking our studies. And he, he came and he said that, Ambrose, can I help? Can you do me a favor? Can you collaborate? And I said, yes, because Yes, we for us we refused uh, some. My boss is a scientist, and he refused some scientific papers. So he, he wanted now to, to to so that we can able to to publish and confirm that black leopard really are found like Kipia. And the, the only thing that we can give a uh, 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 good evidence is through a very good pictorial. Uh, and the uh, and the photographer really has a very good equipment that we can use uh, so that and you can even credit him. You know, this is a collaborative something. And for us, we really wanted the black leopard to be protected and the world to know that they are there and this uh, place needs to be protected. But, you know, he asked me kindly and then we went, we put our camera traps there. I, I helped him. The rangers are there also. We, re we really helped him together. And then after a few times, the picture came. Uh, there is some drama that happened after that, which I am not going to mention in the interview. Uh, but anyway, uh, black leopards are known to be found in this uh, for they are they are the animals that uh, i can say that that, uh, that i can say that they they, they, they are not not uh, believed to be found in kenya it really got attention that i've never even expected it got attention that people are coming all over the world to search this beautiful animal we have now even confirmed that we have like not this one. This photographer photographed this one, but for us, we have never released our 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 our. our, our <coughs> we have always following, try to study them, try to study them. My team and I were working very hard to more more confirm more uh, and protect them. So we have more than one. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'm not allowed to uh, to say how many we have, but uh, I can say that we have more than one uh, around the locality that we are studying taking our study and we are so much happy that they are doing really well in Laikipia whereby Laikipia is a semi-arid place that is very dry very hot and they are known to be found in forestry uh, like in India that is where they are known to be found or in you know in Brazil so that I think it's just because of gene mutation that is uh, causing them to be black that is one of the reasons that maybe they are black and then do you have it so for example i know in some animals such as chimpanzees if you have an animal that um looks a bit different they get ostracized and they can sometimes even be killed by their family members do you have the same issue with leopards as in like that they don't have as much success rate in mating or does it not make a difference oh it doesn't you know <laughs> for us we are using camera traps and you also you are also uh, following them uh, very uh, closely they are, like, the, the, in the in the study area where we are taking our studies leopards are very shy they are really very shy they are very natural you know uh, they are not like if you have ever been in Ma masai mara then like Le Le leopards are not like like uh, you know masai mara leopards they are not like very close to the vehicles and the camera traps are really helping us to uh, learn more about the, uh, the where the how, how they are you know even like uh, well, uh, growing or maybe the, uh, the ecology. Uh, but I can say that uh, we I think it is just because of uh, uh, the rain that does not even we are we are continuing to we started our our research 2016, but we are continuing to study and the 
through only scientific confirmation that we, I can able to tell that, but there is nothing that I can tell now that uh, without any scientific uh, uh, kind of a, uh, confirmation that this is what, because we are continuing to study them. And we've got a question coming through from Jason Staples. Hi, Jason. Uh, always good to see him on the show. And he's asking, can children in your community be taught to be photographers as a trade to, to, to deter them from killing wildlife for trade or being paid to become poachers? Oh, uh, uh, in my community, there is no poachers. Uh, we have few. Uh, we have a cartel. We have a cartel in somewhere in Europe, maybe in in, in somewhere in, in in Thailand or somewhere in uh, whatever place that they are. And it is it's a chain that contact someone in in a port in Mombasa, and someone in a port in Mombasa uh, contact someone in Nairobi. And then someone comes all the way to my village because we have warriors who never gone to school, who never gone to school, and they, 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 it is just the lack of education that is. Uh, after that, they lack job. No one will employ you if you have never gone to school. So we are trying very hard to educate our warriors to teach them uh, the consequences of uh, uh, of being uh, in this uh, cartel of pushing. And we are we are really doing here in gra grassroots. And I can send this message to, to, to those cartels that. Uh, your roots are going to be cut because for us we are going to educate our audience here in the ground and you will never have roots to spray that pushing around here. So one of the things that we are doing is that through this uh, uh, kids conservation that we are creating, uh, Paula is doing a lot of a uh, great job, but there are so many young people are also doing a lot of work to educate their community so that we can, uh, as a kid grow, uh, they know what is all about about conservation. That is one of the things that we are doing. We are doing to take them to the parks, to give them uh, those cameras, uh, as you said about photography. So, uh, you know, these pushers or these cartels that I have mentioned, they're giving uh, 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 young warriors in our community guns to go and kill elephants. So this is one of the things that I want to say. If you have a camera, give to these young boys, not only in my village, but somewhere who, who, who are doing wildlife, and then that is a gun that can be able to get, to get in, other than those uh, cartels that are giving warriors guns to buy and then tell them to go and kill elephants. So that is one of the things that we're doing. Thank you. And so you're saying that like, by providing equipment, that's going to be helping the next generation. And I completely agree. And I think that's, as I understand it, how you came up through the ranks. So if people wanted to support you and to be able to support these kids as well, what's the best way for them to go about it? Uh, the best way that people can do to support kids, uh, I can say that uh, in this show, I'm going to say that uh, uh, maybe uh, the best uh, way that people can, if, if you can allow, uh, if you can able to give uh, uh, donations, uh, be it a book, be it equipment, be it maybe uh, money support or maybe a FECO. For example, a FECO that can able to take these kids to, to, to the parks. It should not even be in my community. It should be somewhere in Africa where kids are. So if you are able to do that, you can able to go to that community and help. And if you are asking it directly to me, I can say that maybe you can uh, you can uh, I, I, maybe you can just follow me in social media, and then I can able to direct you where you can uh, direct your support if you are uh, you are interested to help our, our organization, for, for example, all the Kids Resource Center or if you are interested to have about uh, 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 women empowerment through conservation, we have uh, uh, you know, a uh, right uh, place to put those donations. But uh, I can say that if you can, even if it is in Europe, and you know that there is a community that is there, please support that. Give those equipment to, those, to that community that you are very close to, and then empower those kids to become people that are going to be uh, uh, more successful, and people who are going to help uh, uh, stop this uh, uh, heal uh, bad things that are happening in, to kill wildlife. For example, if uh, someone asks about how can you be able to use photography, photography is the best way you can uh, empower young kids to become photographers, but not pushers. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking pictures, not animals' lives. I completely agree. Um, and I think it's what I love as well there that you're trying to encourage everyone from all over, not just for your community as well. So that that's very generous, and I absolutely love yeah. that. Um, switching kind of back on track and talking, going back to leopards, you touched on it earlier, saying that leopards are notoriously um, elusive. Um, so 
how do you research them um, and how do you tell them apart? And have you got a favorite discovery? Oh, yeah. It, it, as I said, that uh, as a young uh, growing scientist, I uh, would never even know about anything about camera trapping. Uh, it is very difficult to study about leopard, really very difficult. And But I can tell, tell you that you must have a stamina, you must have patience because Sometimes uh, I go around the bush and uh, I can stay even a month without seeing a leopard, you know? Yeah. But uh, camera traps are really helping. And I think uh, one of the things that we have been always using to study them is camera trapping, a citizen science in initiative. For, the, for, for our study area, we need to engage people that are there. Those are the local people. We have ranchers, we have guides. So those are kind of people that are, those are the kind of people that I can tell you that we, uh, I, I get to engage them in this study. And then that is how we also know, because sometimes someone from Europe is coming to, 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 to view wildlife. And then if you, if you want to get engaged in, in, in studying them, you, someone might come who have a very big camera, very expensive camera. And that guy who is interested to uh, get this, that is a citizen science uh, scientist. And then he can donate the pictures and the good pictures we, 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 we are going to use to them to identify leopards. And we, 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 we again still like try to uh, compare with what you get in, uh, in our normal monitoring through camera trapping and also through guiding uh, or opportunity or someone who was up to. Uh, I can say that uh, I, I, I don't have any kind of uh, discovery. That is, I think that is not the thing that I can say that I, I can say that uh, I can uh, call it. But I can say that um, it is interesting to get black leopards. Uh, working very well. That is one of the, my favorite things ever. Uh, and, uh, you know, like this female that is having a regular cup uh, that is just potty and another, another one that is also uh, black, that is amazing, you know, that is beautiful. It's, this, is, this is what exactly nature is trying to teach us. It is teaching us that be it you are black or be it you are uh, uh, something like red or something like that, you can be, uh, uh, you know, that, that female really taught me a lot of lessons. I can say that she gave birth to that regular cub and she is taking care of that regular cub very well without any kind of discrimination. And you can see in the video the way they are playing together, brother and sister, they are doing it very well, you know. So I can say that uh, that is one of the best things that I can uh, describe uh, and I have learned that Nesha is really amazing teacher. I absolutely love that. I agree. Um, and I know that there's a way of identifying each leopard because they're quite unique by the way they look. Um, is it then more difficult when they are the black leopards to like try and identify which one is which? Because you normally go by the rosettes, no? Is that right? Yeah, that is right. And uh, you see, for the black leopard, it is difficult. But uh, currently what we are using is that we are using techniques to, uh, that are also other uh, scientists have been using. For example, Pantera and others. Uh, what we are doing is that we are using the, those identification uh, procedures to identify them, maybe through face, through whiskers. But uh, there is something that we are really doing it, and uh, perhaps uh, it is uh, one of the, it is in one of the uh, uh, you know uh, videos that I created for National Geographic is that we are uh, using some scents to to, to 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 attract leopards and they have them come very close and rub and then we are collecting airs. That is one of the amazing that we are doing because we wanted to use those airs to uh, 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 for DNA purposes. And perhaps if the, we can able to confuse this bad leopard to come closer, then we can have them uh, collect the airs and you can identify this individual without any argument to say that this is so and so. But Yes, I can. I can tell you that it is difficult to uh, get those like black ones that that are, the yellow shape is very. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to. But again, we are using infrared in our camera traps. Our camera trap is capturing some images that are infrared, and I can say that uh, those infrared shows that shows the the the, the, the rosettes that are uh, you know very clear. And then we are we are we we keep on like say that this is the same individuals and. The, Sometimes you see this is an animal that you can't confuse them to come to the camera during the day or the, at night. But you see those rochettes only appear if they come at night and then uh, because the cameras are infrared. Yeah, yeah. That is absolutely wonderful. And we're going to go back again to talk about some of the work that you do in the communities. Now, I know you started your Chai Mamas group 
Um, what was the inspiration behind that? And what sort of changes in attitude have you seen and how has that benefited both the communities and conservation? So this is what happened, is that I, I was raised by a very strong woman, uh, my mom, and she is, uh, she is a victim of what you call domestic violence. And if that is uh, the right word that I can put. Yeah. And uh, so many of our women never gone to school. And uh, in my communities, particularly the communities that I come from, women don't have voice, you know? Women like the yeah, so people are trying to discriminate them, maybe they, uh, just because of that is the nature of women. And it can also very, very, it can be very much difficult for women who never gone to school because it can be even worse to them. They don't know where they report to. They can be getting into those problems and they don't know where they can be able to report. Uh, doing my research around the communities, I get experience and talking with the women who are like telling me these stories similar to my mom. And they, I thought, uh, this is not right, but we need to do it. But what the most uh, uh, inspiring thing that made me to, to form this group is that women are complaining about leopard killing their gods, hyenas killing their gods, and this is their life load. And they're telling me that there is one uh, uh, you know, scenario whereby I went to a community, a, a leopard killed their gods, and the, the, this woman was very hungry to me, and I understand that. She is really very hungry, and she is like, why are you coming here now and your leopard is killing my gods and this is what I depend and stuff like that. So I started like talking to her. Why do, why, what about if you can create other, other alternative of you having living or stuff like that? This woman never gone to school and creating another alternative is a better way. And I, I met this amazing friend of mine, her name is called Ellie. And Ellie is also, a, she was a politician and she believed in, 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 in women empowerment. Uh, personally, I'm not a woman, and I wanted someone who can help so that we can form this group, and the, she can lead them, and but but I can help them in any way that I can, and then we form this group called Shui Mamas. You know what? One when we form this group, I, we are not interested in them to call themselves Shui Mamas. We just we wanted them to form. We wanted to form a group, and then the women will now uh, you know like choose the name that they want. But I was so much surprised when uh, we, we taught them about uh, making soap, uh, sewing machine, like how to make pads, how to make masks, how to make those things, because, uh, you know, they, they just choose the name. They say that, I think, I, I used to, uh, so these people who are coming to see Black Leopard, I tell them they, this group of women. People who are coming to see Leopard, I tell them this group of women. Sometimes people can be so much uh, motivated, they want to help. I can buy a, a sewing machine, I can buy a, a, a kind of a soap, and then I can I can I can facilitate this training, and then I took the I, 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 we went back to the to this uh, to this, and then the women are like, we are getting this benefit because someone is working for leopards, and then they choose the name leopard, and I have been like trying also to educate them about conservation. I think, I think that is another thing that really inspired them. So, if I can describe that, that is just a short kind of a summary that I can give that how I did form the humans. And I recommend if you're watching back home, go and check them out on social media. In a second, I'll bring up um, their, their tag so you can go and have a look and see the incredible work that they're doing. And I know COVID had a big hit on them because obviously tourism went down. So any support that we can give would be absolutely incredible. Um, we got a question coming through from Leslie. Hey, Leslie, she is over in the States. And she's saying that she understands that domestic abuse is a big issue. How can people outside of Kenya help would you need to be an expert in the field to guide or counsel? What's the best way for this? Oh, yeah, this is this is one of the, the best questions. Thank you very much, Misty. And I think uh, uh, maybe through visiting this woman and interact with them, and then we, we can find a need. What do we need? I've been like trying to bring these uh, ladies, like a lady called uh, Priscilla, she's a lawyer. And then uh, we formed this group uh, when we were having a workshop with women. I brought uh, Priscilla, she is from this community. She is a lawyer, but I wanted the, her to educate women about their rights. That is what one of the things that I really wanted her. But yes, if we can have people like those, and even not here in my community, coming, then we can we can bring local girls that are there and then give them support they need so that they can empower women. And then the women know that we have a lot of things here in Kenya that are happening, uh, and activists are doing like female genital cuttings. You know. Uh, 
uh, those those are the things that these women undergo, and they they, they have girls. Uh, over the years, as whenever I'm a leopard researcher and I, I study about that, I have learned a lot of things women go through, especially like these basic things like pad. You know, I never wanted my daughter to be struggling to have this. But you see, as a, as a man who is working with women, women have now uh, broken this barrier and, they, you know, uh, not to be afraid of me, talking to me about this. So if you can able to have a team that can able to educate women more, and then you can even tell the, the girls that uh, educate them that you, we, when you grew up, tell your dad, tell your brother, I need this. Because it is shameful for, for, for a girl never to go to school because of, of pad. That is really very shameful. And uh, it is, this is something natural. It's just natural. And uh, if, if, if a girl bleed in class, and then, then young boys uh, uh, really like uh, love at, at her, we need to give those education. We educate them, and but I can say, Listy, uh, if you are happy to join us, I'm happy, I'm one of the people that are really happy, and you can create something to do that. I love that, and I completely agree. And Winnie kind of echoes what I was thinking, and she's saying it sounds to me like you never stop helping and teaching your community, which is absolutely wonderful. And thank you for your incredible work. So, and I, I completely reiterate that as well. Um, and we've touched on it throughout this conversation. You know, one of the big issues in the world, and I know in Kenya as well, is the population is growing. So there's the ever need into taking on to more land. So then you start having more human wildlife conflict. How do you think that we can balance the need of people against the needs of animals? Uh, in my opinion, uh, the need of people and the need of wildlife, I, as a person who, are, who is doing work for carnivores, that is, that is a balance that uh, I, I'm learning that uh, livestock are very important and the uh, leopards are very important the same thing. We need just, animals never speak. It is just hum, us human who create these problems. So uh, let's say, for example, in my What we're doing is that um, we are doing is uh, one of the things that we are doing as a community is uh, as, 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 as a, a conservation a kind of a conservation uh, organization is that we are trying to help people to mitigate this human kind of conflicts. But you see, uh, when when we are putting a light to the tower and leopard, we are creating those solutions. Those are solutions we are creating because leopard never speak. They, they are coming here to get food. That is one of the things. So if, for example, we can uh, uh, maybe in the near future, because I think I, I think before us uh, uh, things a lot of things will really happen. I can say that if you can continue educating the generation to come to know uh, 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 how 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 uh, both livestock are also important, and then maybe in my community try to balance, and, and because that is one of the things I am advocating that I say that let us not keep a lot of goods because in this landscape. Uh, we keep a lot of goats, uh, it is going to chase away impalas. And when we chase away impalas, then leopard will lack anything to hit. And then after that, we are going to get these conflicts that we're experiencing. That, that is one of the things that I think uh, we are trying to do. And the, anyone, el anyone else in Africa, Europe, where our life are, and there we have communities, just education. Let us uh, try to educate our communities how it is important. Animals never speak. Leopard has no left boundary, and as long as you, as human going to create these boundaries, they then that is the only way that they know that there is a fence here, and then I'm I'm not allowed because there is a electric or maybe electrification that is going to deter me from there. So, I think I can say that uh, education or awareness. Uh, Okay, so I only have one more question left, Ambrose, and then we'll, we'll start to wrap up. If you have a question back home that you would like to put towards and please do pop it on the comments section and I will do exactly that. We've had some absolutely lovely comments as we've been talking, lots of positive feedback. So thank you everyone from wherever you're watching for doing so. If you are liking the show, please do give it a like, comment and a share. The more people who see it, the more awareness we can raise the incredible work that people are doing for conservation. Um, so I like to end things 
on a positive note and try and, um, and give some hope for the future. So I'd love to know what your future plans are and what your favorite success story is. I can say that uh, my uh, my future plans are just like I'm trying to uh, work in my community uh, to help animals as long as as uh, help animals and people. People are very important, you know. Local communities are really very important, and I can tell people that never ignore local community, never abuse local community. If you go to that uh, particular community in South Africa, for example. Uh, uh, make sure that you respect those people. Those people really have been there for years. They have been there. My, grab, my, my grandfather have been here for years. So I can say that uh, our future plan is just I, I will continue with, my, with the support that I'm getting from my team and this other so many great people that are coming through. I will continue to do this, uh, 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 create this awareness about conservation, creating this uh, kids' conservation uh, library. And uh, I am planning, I think, and one of my friends in so uh, Facebook told me that she is seeing uh, this library here, a wildlife library, to become one of the biggest wildlife library here in, in, in Kenya. So that is my dream. I dream that we are going to create a library. This is a small room I have. But I, I dream that maybe one day this library is going to help community and more people will get educated and then learn about wildlife. The other thing that we are also doing is that I will continue to empower women, empower even men and young warriors through uh, conservation to learn about wildlife. And then that is one of the things that I'm, uh, we are, I'm doing. And I'm not doing it alone. I'm doing it with my support of my team and uh, so many people that are also coming through. And I really appreciate that. So in my journey, the most interesting thing is just like coming, going to school and coming to work in my community. That is one of my favorite ever. Like, I don't think if there, uh, uh, there are also privileged people who, who went uh, uh, to school and then come and get the job and work in your community. That is why I'm doing I am doing it here in my community. And that is just through the support that I got to the people who, uh, who believe in my dream and the people who really like support me. So I, 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 that is one of my interesting. Thank you. I think, I mean, I, I absolutely love your story because as you say, you know, you came from parents that couldn't go to school. You managed to get the support to go to school. You then got the support to do the photography. Now you're doing your conservation. Now you're bringing it back into your community. It's a lovely story. And I thank you so much for it. It's a really, really interesting story. I appreciate it. So thank you, Ambrose, for coming on. As I say, we've had some lovely comments. Um, we're going to wrap up now, but is there anything you'd like to say before we say goodbye? Uh, there is nothing else I can say. I say that if you are having a kid that is having a dream to become a wildlife conservation, a conservationist or a photographer or something like that, give that kid support to become someone. And then if you have someone in your community that is who want to do something, don't put politics. Just give that someone support and then the light is going to become there. Because I can say that you can be a light in your community. You can bring us a little light in your community. It can be dark, but if the small uh, thing that you are going to to give a young person like myself is just give those young people support. So it's not like I'm asking people to come help me. We have so many young people who are doing incredible job in those communities that you guys are coming from. Give those support to those young people, and the, then the light you will see the light, and then that is the only advice that I can give. And thank you for giving me opportunity to speak in this show. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure and it just goes to show how small things can make big differences so again thank you for coming on um, and thank you everyone back home for watching for wherever you are and for me all i have to say now is to enjoy the rest of your day and goodbye thank you <laughs>